Acts chapter 16. Approximate date AD 52. So approximate dates that we would have now would be Galatians. Approximately written 48 to 50 AD. First and second Thessalonians written 50 to 52 AD. Now again, if these when these books were written, we don't know when they got out and got circulated. Then came he to Derby or Darby and Lystria, and behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timotheus. So before Paul even meets Timothy, he's already called a disciple, one that's disciplined. The son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish, and believed, but his father was a Greek. So he would be one of them Sumerian type people. He's a half breed Jew, half breed uh, Gentile, Greek, which was well reported by the brethren that were at Lystria and Iconia. So Timothy is well known, his family and who he is. Him would Paul have go forth with him? Uh oh. Go with him and took and circumcised him. Well, wait a minute. Didn't we just have a big meeting about the circumcision? Paul, what are you doing? We just said abstain from idols, blood, drinking, fornication, the circumcision. No. Now Paul is doing circumcision. He's doing it to Timothy and Timothy only. Now, here's the reason why. They circumcised him because of the Jews, which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. They knew that Timothy was half Gentile, half Greek. Where would Paul go when he came to a new city? What was the first place he would go to? So he's going to bring a uncircumcised male into the synagogue. They wouldn't listen to him. When it came to the public restrooms. Huh. You're one of them, but you're not one of them. Us. We're not going to listen to you. And remember, the Jews are still under the law. The unsaved Jews. The law is still present. Like I said, if I were to sit down with an unsaved Jew today in a restaurant, I would ask his permission to say, if I would have a pork sandwich, would that offend you? If it would offend him, say, you know, listen, our law, you should know, uh, Mr. Hayward, that we did not, sir, I understand what you're saying. Let me order something that will not offend you in the law. But you say, you're not under the law. I'm not. And, well, and, you know, today we're, everyone's so offensive. But when you're trying to witness Jesus Christ in the gospel, you can't be offensive. You can't walk up to somebody and preach the gospel to them and have your mouth smell like garbage. Or beer. Or cigarettes. Or marijuana. It's not going to be a good witness. I remember I used to pass out gospel tracts and go to door to door wearing a Marlboro shirt. Until I finally one day, oh, wait a minute, that's wrong. So Paul is circumcising after chapter 15 only because the, the Jews know who Timothy is and they know that his father is a Greek. His father would set the example in that house. I don't care if my wife is a Jewish. That boy is, remained uncircumcised. Paul has to circumcise him because of the Jews. For the testimony of the Jews. That's it. It's not salvation. And as they were through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep and that were ordained of the apostles and or elders which were at Jerusalem decrees these are writings these are rules these are things that are set by the church and the apostles and the elders chapter 15 get away from those idols don't you dare drink anything that has blood in it and avoid fornication and maybe other little things they they would talk about the gospel, Jesus Christ, nothing else. So you see, now that decree is getting out. And you can imagine Timothy sitting there. I wonder if Paul told Timothy after the surgery, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Paul. You're telling me after I had this operation that I did not have this operation? <laughs> A little joke there. But 
for who the people are dealing with with Paul or dealing with the Jews you know you got to realize who you're talking to you're not gonna walk in a Catholic Church and take that mask the host and the cup and dump it upside down and step on the host and you think you're gonna turn around and witness Jesus Christ you just angered him and you know what the Jews have done so far they've been angered Paul does not want to get on their bad side. He was just presently stoned. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. It was growing. Now when they had gone through Pyriga, and I'm wrong about these names, and the region of Galatia, well, there's Galatians. That's the epistle to the Galatians right there, Galatia. And were forbidden of the Holy Ghost. Let's stop right there. Would God stop anything from being? God it said forbidden by the Holy Ghost. To preach the word in Asia. The Holy Spirit came down to Paul and said, Don't you go over there and preach to God. How do you like that one? Don't go over there and preach. <clears throat> And they were come to Mysia, and they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. There are some places the Holy Spirit said, don't go there with the gospel. No one said, preach the word. And even preaching the word, the Holy Ghost said, nope, don't bring it there. Woe be to this region. Woe be to anywhere in the world where the Holy Spirit tells someone, no, you're not going there. But Lord, I set my heart. I want to be a missionary. That, no, you're not going. It's closed. Shut up. Get somewhere else for you to go. And yes, according to the Bible, the Holy Ghost said, no, don't go there. But I want to go back to my homeland. I want to go back to my hometown. I want, And pretty much going back to your hometown, as we saw with the life of Jesus, as Jesus went back to his hometown, it's a closed door. Don't go. So if you got your heart set as a missionary going somewhere, make sure the Holy Spirit is not telling you no. And they passed through Mysia and came down to Toraz. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. Don't go to these places, but Paul, here's a vision. Remember who else had a vision in the Bible? Who was that? It was Peter, wasn't it? Yeah. Peter sent to a Gentile. Paul's now getting a vision. Go to the Gentiles. Paul and Peter's ministry are... And then, you know, you get this group here just to throw Catholic into them, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Ever wonder why Peter, Paul, and Mary? Trying to steal from the Bible. Trying to give Mary a little authority. Okay, we've been 16 chapters in Acts so far. When was the last time Mary spoke? Excuse me, where is she? I don't see her anywhere. I haven't seen her say anything. I haven't seen anybody get married the time of day. So how's that? All right, so go over to Macedonia. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endure. We. Now mark that in your Bible there. That we. The pronouns have changed from they to we. Remember I told you in chapter 15, it's possible that this decree is the first New Testament scripture that's being written and epistle that's being delivered throughout the world right now. In chapter 16, verse 10, Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, has now joined Paul. There he is. Now he writes, from now on to the end of the book of Acts, he writes in the pronoun of me, we. I'm involved in this ministry with Paul, we. I got a note here, 2 Timothy 4.11. So up to now, Paul has now has Silas, and now he's picked up Luke. Now, I don't know if Luke is writing a journal now. And if, if he is writing some kind of daily, weekly, monthly, or wait to later journal, the writer of Acts now is picking up where, okay, now here it comes. 
Now we're seeing from Antioch, we're seeing the Bible being played out and written out. We endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for for uh, called us us for to preach the gospel unto them. You mean no programs? The Holy Spirit forbid them the word. Then we're going to take the gospel. It's all about the word. And again, with modern Bibles, if you if you got a modern Bible, you don't have the word. Salvation rests upon the word. I gotta stress that because if if your salvation did not have the word, I'm gonna tell you there's no salvation at all. I can say that for a Bible fact. We're gonna see it in a moment here. Therefore, oh, this, by the way, he says, called us for to preach the gospel unto him. What Guess what Luke is doing, according to his own writing now. He's preaching. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course on a ship to... Well, they know where they come from. And the next day to Neopolis. Ne 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 Probably find them on the map, old maps. And from thence... You recognize that one? There's where the Philippian church now would come into being. And later on, after Paul leaves Philippians, I guess what he, guess what we're told he does? He writes an epistle to him. Now do you see the Bible start start playing out now, the New Testament? We just visited Galatia, now we're in Philippi. Alright. Which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony, and were in that city abiding certain days. So they stayed a while in Philippi. Philippian. Now this part has been of great concern to disprove the Bible. The part has been debated, but archaeologist evidence showed part I'm trying to read my note here. Was used. That one word upsets them. That part. And yet archaeologists later on found that that part was officially right. The Bible knows what it's talking about. And archaeologists said, hey, here's just the proof. You had any problem with part if I didn't say nothing about that? No. And on the Sabbath, seek still Jewish. He's in Philippi, there are synagogues, Jews, and they're meeting on the Sabbath. Just like Daytona Beach 2016. There are synagogues around here, and they don't meet on Sunday. They meet on the Sabbath. There are seven-day Adventists that have no idea what they're doing, and they call it a Sabbath. When you run into the Gentiles that are in these Sabbaths, has the gospel already been preached to them? No. The Old Testament law of Moses we, we read was being taught to them. They're trying to follow the God of the temple and the God of the Old Testament to do right. Now here comes the gospel. They're getting right and they're leaving the temple only to go back to preach the gospel and teach. But that's not their assembly place. Now watch this. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. Oh, Jesus would never do what you do on the street. The apostles went to the beach and preached and prayed. How's that? Right there. I could go on the beach of Daytona Beach where I live in Florida right now. I can go on that sandy beach and preach and teach people there. And it'll be 100% biblical as it happened in Philippi. There's no building. Buildings and churches came later on. As the Romans came in and infiltrated the church. If you go back to the life of ministry of Paul, I mean of Jesus and Paul and Peter and John, there were no churches. Now listen, the persecution of Jews are set. They stoned Paul. The uh, Roman government killed James. Uh, Peter was in jail ready to be killed. S Stephen was was brutally murdered. You think if you're going to erect a church in the name of Jesus Christ, you think you're going to survive? By the time you come back for the next service, Sunday or Wednesday night service, the church would have been burnt down.
Because wait, wait till you see what's going to happen even further. So Riverside, where prayer was wont to be made at the Riverside, and we sat down on the Riverside and spake unto the women, which we started there. What are those women doing? Washing clothes. There we go. Washing clothes, gathering water. So why do you go to the farmer's market? Because that's where people are. Paul's walking by. Hey, there's a bunch of women washing their clothes over there. I got an idea, Luke. What? Let's go sit down and pray with them and, and, and teach them the Bible. Sure, no problem. There's the opportunity. What are they going to do? Leave? They got to gather all their clothes and they're not going to sit there and ignore or listen. You go where the people are in the gospel. And that's what that's what Proverbs says. Wisdom cries out in the concourse and in the entries of the streets. People come up to you and, well, we want to go knocking on doors. We want to preach on the street. We want to hand a piece of paper to somebody. That's not what Jesus would do. You don't know your Bible. We got a guy who cries out, "Where's peace, 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 peace?" And what we read in the Gospel of John, you're admitting to you. You know what? You don't have that peace. You're crying out. You're a fool, 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 fool. So before you come to anybody who's active. Biblically and evangelism, keep your mouth shut because you don't realize you're damning your own soul. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple. Now, purple was one of them colors of dyed. It was extremely hard to get, extremely uh, expensive. So this is not no low-class woman. Of the city of Thyatira, who, who, which worshipped God heard us whose heart the Lord opened and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul again she worshiped God she wasn't saved she heard Paul she heard the word of God and her heart was open you see that Romans chapter 10 you got to hear the word Paul didn't do nothing but preach the word and teach the word. As a result, her heart opened to the Lord. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Nothing more than that. I'm going to stress it as we go through these books. You've got to have the word. And today, the modern Bible, I've heard people say, well, you can witness to somebody out of the modern Bible and get saved. I'm going to really question that thing. I'm not going to say no, but I'm going to question it because the word is not there. Because I can take you to Acts chapter 8 and show you where complete belief in Jesus Christ is removed. Well, how's that salvation? I can show you places in the modern Bible where Jesus is not God. How are you going to get saved? So she hears the word. And when she was baptized, they're at the river. Man, not only she washing her clothes, but she, her soul got washed that afternoon. You talk about, you can imagine Paul preaching, what is it, Isaiah said, you're but nothing but a filthy rag. You imagine Paul preaching that message out of Isaiah? I think it's Isaiah. That would have been a great illustration right there. If that's what he, I don't know what he preached from that. To me, I would think he, that's what he preached. He knew the Old Testament. All our righteousness are those filthy clothes you're washing, people. See your husband's underwear? That's what God looks like you. That's what God sees when he sees you. And when she had, was baptized and her household, look at this, complete houses get saved. I wish that happened today. She besought us saying, if ye have judged me, oh, she didn't say judge not, least she be judged. If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, Come into my house and abide there. And she constrained. Say, listen, if you find me right as a Christian, as serving God, I would be honored if you came into my house and I took care of you. She say, listen, if I'm not living right, don't listen to what I'm going to say. But if I'm living right, I'd like to have you come in my house and stay in my house. And you get people go, yeah, you not leave, she be yeah, okay, you admit your ignorance. This woman was so right with God, she questioned the apostle, saying, listen, if I'm right, I will have you come and stay with me. But if I'm going to rub off bad things on you and I'm going to be a poor testimony, go away from me. Because I'm not worthy. 
And it came to pass as we went to pray, a certain day. See that certain? Where did you see that certain, certain, certain? You saw that in the Gospel of Luke, didn't you? A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. She's got a devil. Which brought her masters much gain, saying, much gain by soothsaying. Gain saying, too. Open up a little shot. Got this girl here. She can tell you your future. Give us some money. Palm red, uh, seances, whatever she put on the, on the storefront for this girl. And they were using this girl for the means of making money off this girl. Sweatshop. The same followed Paul and us. See, see Luke writing us. Silas, Paul, Luke, and others. Timothy. And cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God. She did have a true devil. And they were making money off it. What did the other devils cry out when they met Jesus? They cried out, Christ, God. Which show unto us the way of salvation. How do you like that? The devils are preaching the salvation. These men know how to be saved. The devils are doing more than today's Christians. Isn't that a wacky tobacco kind of thing today? And this did she many days. But Paul being grieved. Turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Glory to God. When her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone. I got the blessed hope. They got the hope of making money off devils. They caught Paul and Silas and drew them. Luke didn't end up in jail. Knows that? Into the marketplace onto the rulers. This would be your farmer's market kind of place. They're going to have court right in the middle of the, the, the town thoroughfare. And besought them to, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble the city. Yes, and our pocketbook. That's what the complaint is about. Their pocketbook. Teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Well, everything was okay until their profit was gone. As soon as their money was gone, oh, now they're in trouble. And the multitude rose up together against them. The magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Paul's being uh, reaping and sowing again. But then again, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If Paul sir, su suffered and Silas suffered, what makes you think that we today in 2016 are not going to suffer? This wimpy couch potato Christianity, you're going to have to apologize to Paul and Silas. And Jesus Christ, because he suffered above all suffering. And when they had made, when they had laid many stripes upon them, cat of nine tails. They cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Better not lose them. Who, having received such a charge by the judge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stock. You ain't going nowhere. You're chained to this prison. Now, it's quite interesting that Satan lost. With his devils and this girl. Satan lost because these men lost their money. Because we know what the next part of the story happened. 
a man get saved. Had Paul never done what he'd done, he would never have a jailhouse ministry here where a man would get saved. So, yes, things happen. Oh, I got beat. Oh, I got troubles. I got problems to the honor of God. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. This is before the doors are open. In jail, tied to the thing. Oh, Lord God, help the Lord God. It's praising God, singing. They didn't have a hymnal. And the prisoners heard them. Kind of interesting to hear them because they were kept were kept awake. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Do you remember somebody else who was in prison that was awakened? It was chains. Yeah, Peter. See it again? So that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. Now an angel didn't come this time, did it? An earthquake. Foundation of prisons were shaken immediately. All the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. And I remember when I preached this message in prison one time. I told a man, I said, "Hey, you see that?" I said, "How many of you guys are born again Bible believing Christians?" Man, every hand practically went up in that place. I said, okay, so most of you would agree you're Christians. Yep. I said, "You're sitting. We're sitting in this jail right now." I said, if there was an earthquake, every single one of these doors opened to the outside. I said, how many of you would leave? Every hand, even the ones that didn't raise their hands to be crit, every hand rose up in that place and said, I leave. I said, okay. So you're Christians and you would leave. Yep. And the keeper of the prison to wake out of his sleep. What's he doing sleeping? He's supposed to be keeping an eye on them prisoners. His life is in jeopardy if somebody would come down and check on him. And seeing the prison doors open, you guys would leave, right? Okay. And drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. All right, if you guys left this place, you know somebody would be in trouble. Did you realize that? You would cause trouble to somebody else. And that guy had nothing to do with those prison doors being open. Yeah, he was asleep. But he had nothing to do with those chains coming off and those doors being open. And you would got him in big trouble. Now, why did he pull a sword out? Because if he would have to give answer to his top authority that every prisoner left that prison he would kill himself before they killed him and I'm told in some Roman laws that they was told not only would he have died his family would have died now that's what I was told I don't know that him and his family would have been killed these guys leaving but Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Ah, oh, look at that. The prisoners, even though loose, the doors open, they stayed. I mean, that I, there was a hush over that prison that night in Bible study. Do you know that's a miracle itself? I had all the men in one room, I say 30, maybe no more than 50. Men in that room that night, every single one of them said they would have left. And not one man here left. That is a miracle of God. That those men stayed there seated with the chains off their feet. But Paul cried in a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm. He's going to kill himself. For we are all here. Then he called for our light. And sprang in, came in trembling. And fell down before Paul and Silas. Now he's not worshiping him. And brought them out. He said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Repent and be baptized. No, that was Acts chapter 2. Be circumcised. No, that was chapter 15. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved, and thy house, 
and they spake unto him the word of the Lord. See, if there was no word of the Lord, he would not have got saved that night. Thanks to a jail ministry that God put Paul and Silas in jail, we've got the greatest two verses in the New Testament for salvation. Acts 16, 30 and 31. And don't forget 32 because they needed the word of the Lord to be saved. And to all that were in his house. Again, a whole household getting saved. So verse 31, he believes. And he took verse 32, it's the word preached. He took them the same hour of the night, it's after midnight, and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. They believe of the word, and then they were washed and baptized. And he and all his that looks like the prisoners in the in the jailhouse also got saved and baptized. Because you want to say all his, speaking about his family, all his would have been all those people that were put under his authority in that prison. Now, it didn't say all of them. It just said all his. It could have been all of them. Not only did his jailer get saved, not only did his house got saved, but the prisoners got saved. What a jail ministry. Imagine if they would have taken off. They would have missed the hope of God. Prayers and singing praises are not going to get you saved. Did you see that? Because that's exactly what Paul and Silas did. They sang and they prayed. And they weren't saved. It says stuff for your singing ministry, doesn't it? And when they had brought them into his house... This is not going in at, at, at this house. This is in the jail. When he brought him into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing that God, believing in God with all his house. Well, look at what the word of God's doing. A man that was going to commit suicide got saved that night. Now he's redressing forever, waiting for the blessed hope, and is now present with the Lord, for absent from the body, as he's died by now, and present with the Lord. I wonder if him and Paul know each other in court. I don't know if we know each other in court, but you just imagine, and you remember that time we were in jail? I thought, man, I was going to kill myself. Thank you for Paul for giving me the word. And it was day. All this happened after midnight. Day would be after 6 a.m. The magistrate sent the sergeants saying, let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, the magistrates have set to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. They don't know where Paul and Silas are. They don't realize they're in this guy's house. They think they're in the prison. He goes home. Hey, guys, guess what? You're set free. You're liberty. Doesn't say anything about the prisoners, the other prisoners. Probably, they probably went back with that guy obediently going back to jail, put themselves in those shackles and say, huh? Oh, that guy is one of us out there right now. We're all brethren in the Lord. Next time you come back and be our thing, we'll have a little Bible study together. And the keeper of the prison told this to say to Paul, the magistrates had said to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. Now, this is where Paul turns to the flesh side. But Paul said unto him, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned. Paul, don't forget, Jesus was found innocent three times. And you beat Christians. Being Romans, and have cast us into prison... And now do they thrust us out privily, quietly, no one knows? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fletch us out. Paul, you're getting a little hasty word, because if they were to come to fetch you out, you're at the prison, you're at the jailer's house. That's not where you belong. 
unless you were going to bring him back to jail. But Paul's a Roman. He's a Roman citizen. We're going to learn later. And there were laws on how you treated Romans. They just violated the law with Paul. You are not to treat a Roman like this. And they did. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. You just broke the law. And they came and besought them and brought them out. So evidently he brings them back to the prison. And desired them to depart out of their city, just like they did Jesus. Get out of here. We don't want you here. And they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. So this is the Philippian jailer. This is the letter, one of the letters that Paul writes to the Philippians. That letter to the Philippians that we read, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, would made it right back to this guy and probably his prisoners. How do you like that for writing? Remember, as we go along, we're going to see where Paul and these churches, where he's writing from. We just seen Galatia. Now we're in Philippi. And one of these, I think Colossians is the only church that Paul doesn't go to. Let me check this real quick. Uh, Yeah, Paul never never goes to Colossia, book of Colossians. But Ephesians is coming. Romans is towards the end of Acts. So Paul going to leave these cities very soon. When he leaves his city and goes to other places, he's going to sit down, he's going to write them a letter. And that letter is going to make it to where the churches are. And they're going to be read throughout the churches in those cities. And then boom, guess what? They end up in our Bible. So in actuality, really, the the, uh, the the book of Philippians has not been written yet. He just left them. But we're getting close. 